my name is Crystal and welcome to Unlock the Story. If this is your first time here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss out on any episodes like this one that we're having here today. I am so excited to be joined in today's episode by my friend Mindy. She is an artist and she introduces herself, so I won't say too much more um, about her, but I am excited to be looking at her artwork today and to be talking about symbolism and what it means and can look like to represent present truth in your artistic expression. So without any further ado, let's get right into my conversation with Mindy. Well, thank you so much, Mindy, for coming on on Unlock the Story and for talking about your artwork with us today. Um, I am so excited because as we were pre-chatting, I love your work. <laughs> I love so much of what you have created over the years. And I'm excited to talk about a couple paintings that you've shared with me for our discussion today. So before we do that, though, why don't you give people just like a two minute intro into who you are and the kind of work that you do? Sure. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is Mindy Oten, and um, I live near Calgary, Alberta. Um, I am a, a working artist. Uh, I used to do interior design, but I uh, had an encounter with Jesus in an art box. And that's another story. But basically, I felt called into the arts back into art and um, to do it for him. So that kind of led me on a journey of um, really focusing my art practice on spiritual, um, biblical truths. So, and the Lord opened doors for me um, to travel with ministries, to paint live at worship events. Um, and, and now in this last season, I've been really focused at home in my studio. So doing a lot of studio work, large scale projects that uh, tell kind of the biblical stories. So that's, that's kind of what I do. So I'm, I'm really curious, how has, um, painting from scripture changed your relationship with the Bible? Now, cause you are a longtime painter. Um, you've trained in it, um, in post-secondary schooling. I've seen some of your pro projects you've done that are unrelated uh, to biblical work, and they're amazing um, and very thought-provoking. So I'm really interested to hear for you, as you felt God calling you back into painting and into doing this style of work, how has it changed your personal relationship with Him? Oh, I mean, it all started kind of, come, I came back into art. I left it at art school. So I went to art school, kind of left art school, not really knowing, like, what do you do with an art degree? So I didn't have a lot of confidence in my work at that point either. So yeah. I, I just left it. And about 13, 14 years after is when I had this encounter with Jesus. Um, and he, in a moment, I knew like that spiritual knowing that I was created to do art for God. Like, I just knew that's why he created me. So it sent me on this journey of like, yeah, I just, I just jumped in. I, I just painted whatever I felt he placed on my heart. And so it took me into a season of a lot of seeking him in prayer, seeking him in just my day to, you know, like whenever I wanted inspiration on an art piece, I would just ask God simply, what do you want me to paint? Mm -hmm. And it started it kind of, I think I was created a little bit to, I really love symbolism I love metaphors. I love thinking what, how can you visualize a spiritual concept? And, and it's, you know, that it is different. Um, it's challenging, but it can be really fun. And I think that's kind of gave me the basis on how to interpret scripture and art is the, the symbolic language that I see is what yeah. I just paint out. And I think that's different for everybody. And that's why I think God loves using artists to speak his messages is that we all have a different unique style and yeah. uh, we grow up in different places. We're from different cultures. Like he, he needs artists, I think of all kinds to have a different language to represent truth. And so it will speak to all different people in different ways. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think there, it can be dialogued a bit. Is that, is there a right or wrong to this? You know, that's the thing with art. I don't think there is really a right or wrong. I mean, you can, truth is truth in scripture, but how you interpret it 
will filter through a different lens depending on who you are. Yeah, that, so. that's so true. You know, I love that because um, you see that just be easily between the different mediums, whether you're writing, um, like let's say a novel or a poem versus a painting versus a film. Um, it's easy to see how those are physical different lenses. But then, as you just said, like, your place of origin, the culture you grew up in, the church traditions you grew up in, those also give another lens and flavor to how you read scripture. So yeah. for you, I'm, I'm really curious because so much of your work is reliant on your personal relationship with God and that, and that listening to him and responding to Holy Spirit. Um, mm -hmm. How has that shifted when you do pick up your Bible just to read it? Do you pick up your Bible just to read it? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Well, when you're painting biblical stuff, you, yeah. you I read a lot of it. Um, it. It totally changes the way I read scripture because when I'm reading it, I visualize. Mm. Um, and I've sat all, quite a bit and I'm like, so... <sighs> I've like, I did have debates with God quite often in terms of how I express certain things. I mean, even down to, should I be painting this from that Bible time period? How would that look? We didn't live there. Like, I don't know what that would exactly be like. We have, you know, we can research um, time periods and see like what, what would a vessel a jar mm. look like in mm -hmm. his time period versus ours. And then I've had these, you know, maybe I'll evolve in some of my newer stuff. We'll see. But I've also thought about like biblical truths painted in modern day settings and times yeah. because we live out the Bible still. And so I think that, but what's beautiful about that, I think it gives artists a lot of leeway on how to interpret truths. It can be, you know, Bible times straight to modern times and through it, um, that's the uniqueness of how it's expressed, you know? So he created all of it. He created us now and what we live in. So um, how it's interpreted, I think um, it, we do have a lot of leeway, but coming back to the truth, I think is how, how uh, if, if an artist is based in biblical truth, I think that should come out in their work but mm -hmm. that is the debate, right? It's like, yeah. what's right or wrong in this whole thing and how to express creatively in our yeah. modern time. Yeah. Something that's ancient. Yeah. Like, you know? <laughs> so well, it, it, it keeps going back to that question. Like throughout this whole series, we keep asking the question, like, why did they do that? Right? Like that's, yeah. and that's really like the core of artistic license is saying like, why? Why right. would you choose to represent blindness with the bandage versus not? And and that is that that personal lens. Um, yeah. And I I I do believe in the freedom um, of expression in that regard. In that, like as you said, truth is truth. And if you're coming back to that foundation of truth, it's gun going to be represented in the work that you create. But how you represent it, how you picture it, it will be different. And um, yeah, I really, really love that. So I'm wondering for you, like, be, as Christians, um, and especially I find with Christ people who have been Christians a long time, we tend to have a real reverence for the word, which is beautiful, right? We have such high respect and high regard for for the written Bible. And and sometimes I find that that can make us a little bit uh, nervous or give some trepidation um, to our artistic expression of, of biblical truth. Have you found that for yourself that um, where you, sometimes you pick up the Bible and you're like, oh, I don't know if I can actually do this because it's just too sacred. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, definitely I've had moments where I'm like, I hope I, you know, I hope that painting is okay or made sense, you know, like, um, well, the water to wine, I, I contemplate that. Am I allowed to represent it a little bit differently than maybe how it was written? Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I, but I also go to God in prayer about it. And I think that's the beauty of like how he, he, he reminded me, like, I dream a lot and mm -hmm. my, our dreams are very symbolic. They're, you know, he can take symbols and in different things, like in scripture, even I think of even 
the, when you really dig deeper into it, even in the Hebrew language, things mean different than our language. Mm-hmm. So there's even more hidden symbols, even in their language of the time that right. we may not interpret right. Like great example, when I painted Genesis, I, in our culture, we grew up in church representing it as an apple. Well, mm-hmm. guarantee it wasn't an apple. Our modern day yeah. apple wasn't the fruit on that tree, right? Yeah. I still did it that way. I hummed and hawed, but it's like, I don't know exactly what that fruit would have looked like. So yeah. we need to symbolize it somehow. Well, an apple paint the fruit. You know, we see it in art all mm-hmm. over that Eve had an apple. Yes. But <laughs> I know, I, I remember painting it and being like, well, I guess I could have done something like a pomegranate or something different. But then again, I felt like the Lord's like, you know, whatever it is, Mm. you know what the symbol of it means. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Like, it's okay. But I had people, like I had a guy, I don't even know. He was just like, you know, that wouldn't have been an apple. And I'm like, yes, I'm very aware that I don't know that, but I had to (laughs) paint some fruit, right? Like, so I think, and that's the other thing, like that I think artists have, we get a lot of criticism, like- We get criticized quite a bit um, for how we interpret things in expression. But the best part is, is for for me, the way I overcame criticism is, is, you know, artistic expression is how your lens sees it. So, Mm -hmm. you know, if God speaks to us in dreams and that thing in the night represents something very spiritual, then I feel like that's how he's designed the mysteries of the kingdom. So, you know, Mm -hmm. we can go to scripture and find something that he's referencing that makes sense in our life. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. Back to your one question though, on reverence. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I didn't do for years because I did have such reverence and I'm like, no, it felt very sacred was painting Jesus's face, Mm. representing his physical face. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what he looks like. Like, yeah. we really just don't know what he looks like when he was in the flesh. We don't. Mm-hmm. And so that part for years, I'm like, I'm only doing hands and feet. That's why I do so many hands and feet. But then I was challenged, um, in a commission, uh, a, a, a church wanted a picture of Jesus. Like they really wanted me to paint his face for that a project. And so I did it. And, you know, it broke something because I, I just, and I felt the Lord's grace saying, Mm -hmm. you're, you're painting out of your love for me. You're seeking my face. We see it in scripture. Um, seek my face, although it could be just a really bright light. And Mm -hmm. like in Moses's case, he came down glowing because he was in his presence. And so that's one area in painting but this last series i did do a few pictures of him i didn't do a straight shot some are sideways whatever but uh i just felt i felt okay i felt okay to do it at this point <laughs> like <laughs> you know if it draws people to him that's all i care about so yeah no matter what he looks like we just don't know 100 percent. so there's one more painting here that you have shared with us um and this is very fascinating because I actually kind of I have an idea of what it is. Um, and what I, I when I looked at it, I was like, okay, I think I have my own interpretation here of the hands holding the nails. Oh, uh, yeah. Tell me the story for you behind this. Painting. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I was, do- I'm painting moments in his life, and you know, we do know from scripture that he was a carpenter's son. I mean, I think mm-hmm. it's only mentioned that one time, but um, yeah. Joseph, his earthly father, was a carpenter. So I'm like, well, I need a moment of his early life. Let's do mm-hmm. this. Like I chose a toddler, kind of a toddler time period. And I don't know, I didn't overthink it too much, but I wanted him learning, you know, a carpentry trade. And I had a picture of Joseph hammering nail. And then I thought, well, maybe, you know, like the interaction of the two, father, son, maybe the son can hold it or he could be holding it or something. And then I had this moment where I'm like, I totally pictured Jesus holding both nails Mm. as a little boy. And I thought, oh my goodness. And it totally just gives symbolic reference to the future mission he's going to accomplish. 
was being nailed to the cross. Mm -hmm. And so I, that's definitely an artistic license thing of my interpretation of taking something symbolic from, you know, his father being a carpenter to his father in heaven, you know, Mm -hmm. having this divine mission for him to be sacrificed on a cross for humanity. So I, I just, that's where I took, I just thought, well, let's just like reference ahead that he was an obedient, he was obedient to his father's will mm-hmm. and his father's plan and his father teaching him this at a young age. So it kind of, it's very symbolic of that. It's, but my, like, even I have three boys and when they saw it, I didn't tell them any of that reference, but immediately my kids saw it. They yeah. were like, Oh, that's giving you an idea that he's going to be nailed to cross. And I'm like, yeah. So and again, I put a monarch butterfly. That was my common thread in this entire series. And it's just, it was just kind of resting on his arm. And it just shows that the transformation of freedom and new life that's coming through Jesus's sacrifice. So, you know, how a butterfly completely, you know, is yeah. reformed from caterpillar in a chrysalis to flying that was my common theme. It references Jesus's life, life, death, and resurrection. And so, mm. yeah, that was kind of that. It's pretty straightforward, but you know. It's straightforward, but then it brings up so many other questions and thoughts mm-hmm. like, you know, what would it have been like for Jesus as a toddler to, right. you know, he's given up his divinity purposefully um, and like, what does that even mean as a toddler? Like, how aware is he that in another 30 years from now? And oh, because we we know we do have biblical reference that at 12, he had an awareness yes. of, of, uh-huh. of his calling and what he was to do. Um, and I always, you know, look at because we talk about how he was fully man, but fully divine um, as G- when, when he was here on earth in the body of Jesus and um I've always looked at that to mean that he had access to his full divinity. He just chose not to walk in it. And, you know, what does that mean as a toddler? (laughs) I don't know. Yeah. I don't know either, but it brings so many things of going like, wow, like the mysteries of God, the mysteries of heaven, the mysteries that are to be unveiled yet, you know? Um, uh, But it also like even thinking, like I haven't thought about this till we were just talking, but I think back to things in my childhood that completely makes sense to my adulthood on what I liked, what I was being trained in, yeah. um, all of these things um, that at that time I had no clue, Yeah, you know, but I think that's such a cool thing. I think God births you, creates you, your likes, even as a child, mm. your future like mission or calling is often you're being trained the whole time. Yeah. In what you do. That's so cool. Well, Mindy, this conversation has been so much fun. I just yeah. want to say thank you for um, being faithful in your artwork and in creating these different series. Um, I have benefited personally from them. I have shared them with friends and family because I just think it is so beautiful and uh, such a wonderful gift to all of us, uh, the work that you create. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this conversation between Mindy and I. I just love chatting with her. It's always a good time and challenging, and it's amazing to see new things in her artwork, even as we were discussing it together. If you missed it in the conversation, um, we do recommend this book of hers, Garden of Grace. In it, she has 66 paintings, one painting to represent each book of the Bible. Uh, We will put her um, website in the description box below so you can go over and check out her website check out garden of grace and even order your own copy there it is well worth the purchase 
I am so excited to be having these conversations and I would love to hear from you in the comments below what has impacted you about this conversation today or maybe one of the past episodes. Um, we just want to hear what things are going on for you. And please, if you haven't already, do hit the thumbs up button, um, the like button. It really does help the algorithm in getting episodes like this one and others of our work out to more people. Thanks again and we'll see you next time.